All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Missing History mod, which is being released by form user Snark. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a number of parts meant to fill in some of the gaps in the Making History pack, which I gotta admit, I I don't normally tend to care much for part mods like this, as a lot of the parts, in fact most of the parts in this, are simply copy-pasted stock parts that have been resized. But I definitely agree with Snark on this one, making history added in the 1.875 meter size of parts, and a lot of parts were missing. We didn't have comparable things that we had in 1.25 and 2.5 meter sizes, and this tries to rectify that. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what parts we do get. Now let's grab the Mark II command pod here, and normally we We'd go into our mod filter, but sadly, of all the parts in this mod, only two are actually new and qualify under missing history. So it's these two engines. So for the rest of them, we could just sort of search through everything, but I had to go and return to our old school methods back in the day before Janitor's Closet came along and make a custom grouping here. So these are all of the different parts that Missing History adds in. Now, like I said, most of them are just copy-paste resizes, but we do also have a couple of texture changes and model changes as well, which actually I really do like. Uh, there's a few engines in here that are new engines that are a lot nicer now. So let's start by, of course, looking at the 1.875 meter parts that are added in, and let me actually just go over to my second monitor real quick and scroll down to make sure I tell you all the right things. And of course, we'll start with nose cones. We have nose cones in various sizes in the game, but none in 1.875 meters. Now we do, in both the uh, just normal cone and the slanted aerodynamic cones. So you now have them in this size to fit flush with this size of rocket, which is quite handy. We also have a new probe cord down here, the RC-001M remote guidance unit, which is now in 1.875 meters. We also have a lovely reaction wheel in 1.875 meters, a new Z2K rechargeable battery bank with 2,000 electric charge, also in 1.875 meters, and a medium holding tank being able to hold up to 600 ore. We also have the PBX1500 jumbo xenon container holding 14,250 xenon, as well as the, oh, let's go to this one first, a service bay in the 1.875 meter size, as well as the RT-25 Stomper Solid Fuel Booster, which is a 1.875 solid rocket booster. And it's wonderful, producing 750 kilonewtons of thrust maximum in vacuum, with an ISP max of 210, and of course, solid fuel. And it is a pretty... Pretty bulky little rocket there, I like it, I like it very much. So those are all the different 1.875 meter parts that have been, I want to say added in, but again, they are copy and paste parts from the stock game that, of course, if we do go back here real quick and say for this one, the RC-001M, is just a resized RC-001S, and that is just all it is. But you know what? Again, I'm happy with that because it fits in line, flush, with no odd things with the 1.875 meter size of parts, which means you can make those size rockets a lot more usable now that you have a properly sized reaction wheel, battery, holding tank, xenon container, service bay, and then a nice thick solid rocket booster. <laughs> so let's go back over to our custom group and let's uh, knock all these off and take a look at the next three parts, which are retextures, or rather 
additional textures. Now we have the S314-1400 tank, the S3-3600 tank, as well as the S3-7200 tank. Now these are normal stock parts here, and this is with their stock texture, but this mod adds in a new orange and gray texture, which I think looks a lot nicer. I mean, just go back and forth between those. It's it's higher resolution, more detail to it. It's just gorgeous. I really, really love the thing. It's just beautiful. And of course, we have the same orange and gray one here for this tank and an orange and gray variant for this tank. All of them just looking Gorgeous. I really, really do like the look of these. They are pretty darn cool. Now, again, I need to scroll down on my second monitor here to make sure that I don't tell you wrong other things. And actually, I almost missed a part there that I forgot about. We have another resized part. We now have the Kerbobodyne. I can never say that right for some reason. S2 to S3, which is for 2.5 meters to 3.75. And that with, of course, the lovely, lovely different transitional things. So we do have some good textures for that and just a nice adapter tank. Now, the next is three engines, which are stock engines that have been completely redesigned. And these... Oh, these I really love. So we have first the Terrier, which is a stock engine that ha now has a completely new model and texture. Still all the same stats on this thing, but it just looks so much nicer. I really, really do love this model rather than the others. Now these are from Porkjet, so that's where these models come from. We then have the Reliant, again a new textured and modeled version of the Reliant, much nicer than the standard stock variant. And then we have the Swivel, again, a new modeled and textured engine with all the same standard stats as it has in the normal game. And very nice, I do like these. Now, then we have two custom new engines. We have here the Valiant, which is a half Swivel. So uh, take the swivel and make it smaller. And this particular one is on its stats, 105 kilonewtons max thrust in vacuum, 310 on the ISP, using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and having a gimbling range of four degrees. Now the other engine that we have here is the Pug, and it is a half terrier sized engine. There we go, I really like to look at this thing, it's very cool. And it has a max thrust in a vacuum of 30 kilonewtons with 340 ISP, liquid fuel and oxidizer, and does hold 18 liquid fuel and 22 oxidizer. It is a beautiful little engine that I very much enjoy and plan on putting onto many probes. It will fit in quite nicely. And uh, yeah, that's all the parts, that's it. So we get two new engines, three completely new models for three existing engines, three or four rather new textured uh, fuel tank bits, and then a number of copy pasted resized parts. So yeah, that is missing history. So let's take a look at a just crappy ship that I threw together here with all missing history parts except for, of course, parachute on the top there, our Mark II command pod, and this TX-1800 fuel tank. God, I really do like these uh, Stomper SRBs. I, d I don't know why I love them so much, but they're just kind of these short, stout little solid rocket boosters and they make me laugh. So let's go launch this and it's just for show. I mean, these parts work just like any other part. There's nothing special about them besides their new adjusted size. So we'll launch here in three, two, one, lift off. There we go. And so yeah, if you'd like to check out this mod, and I would definitely recommend that you should, if you do enjoy the 1.875 size of parts, as I do, but believe, as me and Snark apparently, that there's a lot of gaps in the variety of parts, then you can take a look at the link in the description, as per usual, to check this mod out for yourself. And yeah, that is 
really it for this episode today. Nothing more else to talk about on this one. So, do go check it out, and I do hope that you come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. Why did I decide to flip this rocket? I don't know. Oh well. Later.